Viewpoints on the Talk Station FM 107 AM 1240. We're live on location again at the Conservative Leadership Conference here in Cary, North Carolina, where I have been having the pleasure of listening to some phenomenal speakers and joining us this afternoon for a few minutes. A speaker that was, in fact, as it turns out, really the keynote speaker. I, she was one of three, but in reality, the keynote speaker. She is a journalist, a film producer, and a director, and has been involved in several films. One we will touch on briefly, and that is Frack Nation. But the other one, and one we're dealing with Kermit Gosnell, and it was that part of her presentation this afternoon that was, quite frankly, most stirring, and it extended beyond the concept of what we were thinking about this afternoon we were going to be listening to on politics and issues and it went further into an issue quite frankly of good versus evil and a concept of humanity and so with a great deal of pleasure and I've, I'm just going to warn our guest as she's hearing this introduction she's looking forward to a power nap I might add uh, she's been busy very busy and Nickel Henry McElhenney. 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 Very McElhenney. Good. Okay, and uh, I, I'm going to uh, dispense of my normal jokes about Irish or Italian, but no, definitely McElhenney. Irish, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon, and this is an amazing story, and tell us a little something about your background before I get into briefly the details of your story this afternoon that you gave, but tell the background on you. Yeah, I used to be, um, I used to be a high school teacher in Ireland, um, and then I met a man, you know, your listeners hear this kind of thing all the time. Um, my husband, Phil, now husband, Phil McAleer, and uh, he was a journalist, worked for the Financial Times, and we were located, we were moved to Re- Romania, to Bucharest, Romania, where uh, he was a correspondent, and after a short time being there, I decided to become a journalist myself, and one thing led to another, and we started making documentaries, because we felt that film is a very powerful medium for getting very important stories out. You know, that is a topic. I look forward to future conversations with you on this. And this is the aspect of media and the role that media plays in our culture, our society, our politics, our economy, every aspect of our lives. And you and I both being in the media field in one capacity or another, I'm kind of fascinated now by, quite frankly, a term I use cautiously, by the power of it. And, of course, you are going to be involved in several documentaries. Let's talk about the first one. I want to leave at the end the one related to Kermit Gosnell a little later in our conversation. But let's talk about your topic of Frack Nation. And you were giving that as a presentation today here at the Conservative Leadership Conference. What precipitated your interest in fracking, and where are you in this uh, this documentary? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we made a documentary called Frack Nation. We've made a number of documentaries uh, examining some of the more hysterical claims made by environmentalists. Basically, their biggest claim is we're all about to die. Everything right. is terrible. You know, progress was a really bad idea, and the past was some kind of halcyon time when things were great. And, you know, you need to ask people of a certain age here at the conference what they thought of the past, and it's an ugly place they wouldn't want to visit if they could. You mean the good old days of the tuberculosis, depression. you know, and that's depression. Right. Yeah, and absolutely. Depression. Yeah, polio, uh, yeah. which was a huge problem in America and in, in Ireland, doesn't exist at all now. Um, so yeah, so they have this kind of romantic notion about the past and a very anti-American, anti-progress mm-hmm. uh, attitude towards towards now. And fracking fits into that. Fracking is a miracle. It's a, there's nothing short of a miracle what's happened in America. Any any signs of life in the economy that you see anywhere in America is directly connected to the fact that fracking, the fracking miracle has happened. A lot of people don't know that, but the, you know, the economy has been dramatically altered by it. We suddenly have gas prices that are extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have natural gas that has just dropped in price by about 80% now from previous levels in like 2005. And then you have also these local stories, these local beautiful stories. I know here in North Carolina you've just lost the moratorium, thanks be to God. But in places like Pennsylvania, you go and visit Pennsylvania, particularly poor parts of Pennsylvania, where this miracle occurred, where ordinary people in every walk of life have watched their fortunes change. You know, it's interesting, you said something this afternoon at the luncheon, and again, we're at the Conservative Leadership Conference here in Cary, our guest, by the way, Anne McElhenney. We're talking with her initially about her documentary on Frack Nation. You said something that I was totally ignorant about, and I would say the vast majority, 90% of the population of this country is. You said, we're the only country, the only country. On the planet Earth. 
that. where an individual can own mineral rights. And I, 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 I cannot describe to you how much I enjoy going to audiences in America and telling them this other extraordinary thing about America. It's a game changer, and it was a particular game changer in terms of the fracking technology because it meant we didn't have the interference of government coming between farmers, landowners, people who know best what's right. good for the land, who have been on the land for generations, who've cleared the land, for their forefathers cleared the land. They know it really, really well. They can talk directly to an oil and gas company. In a lot of parts of America, they used to do that. <laughs> and this new conversation is one that they're enjoying very, very much so. All right. The, uh, this particular documentary is Frack Nation. Correct. We're talking with uh, one of the, you and your husband are the, develop, the creators of this uh, documentary. All right. The other documentary we're going to talk about here very briefly and... Uh, uh, again, McElhenney, Ma- Anne McElhenney, Correct. our guest. Uh, let's talk about the issue of Kermit Gosnell. Yes. That I gathered in your presentation today, for want of a better description, is a life changer for you. And yes. yet I would say many of the people who heard this conversation today, it was a life changer for them. Yeah. And I walked away with the question you asked earlier of the question related to the, the Holocaust. And I'll get to that in a moment. Tell us a little something about the Gosnell documentary, which, by movie, the way, movie, 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 yeah, not documentary, yeah. All right, which, by the way, let's do, do, do this at the outset. You are crowdfunding, so yeah. little shameless self promotion is always allowed on my program on Thank viewpoints. You. So uh, we're going to also mention this. You ha- folks who are listening have the opportunity to give a whopping. You, you asked for such a large donation. A dollar? <laughs> I said, for example, yeah, give us a dollar, give us $10, give us $10,000, by the way, if you can, and many people have. Um, go, go to gosnellmovie.com, that's all you do. Go to gosnellmovie.com. Gosnell so far, 27,000 people have given us money, so we have two point, about $2.2 million. We're hoping to add about $500,000 to that in the next two months. Okay. This is the biggest story ever that America needs told. This is your Holocaust here on your own. It's murder in plain sight. This is your biggest American serial killer he leaves Gary Ridgway in the small people's person uh, category. This man killed thousands of babies over a 30-year period, and everyone needs to know about him. Right now, a lot of conservatives know who he is, but the rest of the country don't because the media never covered the story. After listening to your presentation today, I would also argue, and I, I, I say this uh, in, in a friendly fashion because I know you would instantly agree, Kermit Gosnell was the instrument, but it was a policy, a people, and a, a, a willingness on the part of duplicitous individuals who played as much a role in this. And, and you mentioned the issue of the Holocaust, that while there were actual participants involved in it, how many people turned a blind eye. And you mentioned that in your presentation today. And I would say, that walking away from that, that's what caught my attention. More yes. than just the fact that this individual was a heinous murderer, Yes. or if there's something beyond that. It was the number of people that, over how many years did so, you say? Over, well, over the last 17 years is a particularly 17? bleak period where no one ever walked across the threshold from the Department of Health, from the Department of State, from the Department of Sanitation. All these people in all these beautiful offices in Harrisburg, uh, in Pennsylvania, bureaucrats, beautiful salaries, beautiful offices, beautiful pension plans, and their only job was to protect the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and they failed in that. They didn't just fail in that. What they did was criminal. They they cons- consistently, repeatedly received complaints, detailed complaints of the kind of hell that was going on every day in that place, and they did nothing. They, in essence, facilitated. Correct. Correct. And unfortunately, it was a Republican governor, Tom Ridge, who particularly um, is uh, culpable in this case. He made, um, and it's in the grand jury testimony, it's, it's very clearly there. He said to the Department of Health, I don't want anything to be put in the way of a woman's choice. Uh, no barriers to a woman's choice. And that was interpreted as meaning never inspect. I, of course, watched all the lineup of people who wanted to chat with you immediately following your presentation today at lunch. Again, our guest, Ann McElhenney. We're going to give just brief details about the uh, film. I'm looking forward to possibly a longer conversation with you. I, I want to be con- uh, considerate of your time and uh, I'm sure weariness as well, Ann. But I think the important aspect of this is not, again, as I mentioned a moment ago, the criminal himself, but really how... The system facilitated, actually supported. And you said in your speech today that this was 
all this information is information that was gathered in the court case. It was not a matter of activists that were presenting Correct. this. This is this is just just simple just testimony, testimony, testimony technical, sworn testimony, technical information. Yes. That if you follow the dots, tells the story. Yes. The name of this movie. It's called Gosnell uh, right now, and it will continue to be called Gosnell. That's the name we want everyone in America to know. We want people to find out what he did and to ask a lot of questions. How did this happen? How could this happen in America in the 21st century? How was it possible that all these people in the Department of Health, the Department of State, the Department of Sanitation decided to do nothing? How is that possible? And then, and then once everyone discovered what was happening because of the heroic efforts of one police officer, only because of that... Uh, we now know the story. And why was it that then, when we did discover the story, the media decided it wasn't a national news story? How is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, of course, you, uh, you mentioned Kirsten Powers and her comment uh, comparing the beheading of, uh, uh, of individuals in the Middle East and that of the beheading of children. And you said, it was just, she said, apparently, it was just a matter of geography. Well, she was, what, was she, what she was specifically talking about was that Gosnell's modus operandi was to deliver babies alive um, at whatever stage and then to sever their spinal cords with a scissors. And, that, and her point was that while that is beyond, beyond shocking and be, you know, really hard to even begin to get your head around, she said it's morally irreconcilable for you to be disgusted by that but think that it's okay to do that inside the womb legally, which, by the way, is the law in America. I mean, the law in America is only comparable to laws in pl heinous places like China. You can basically, in this country, because of Roe v. Wade, have an abortion at nine months. If people are comfortable with that, that's fine. I just don't think people know. Our guest, Anne McElhenney, and the other thing that I thought was and a, a great takeaway, that you quoted somebody who asked during the Holocaust, where was God? Yes, yeah, Jonathan Sachs, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, in a documentary whose name I can't remember, was walking around the, the ruins in, in, in Auschwitz and, and said, the question is often asked, where was God in Auschwitz? And he said, it's the wrong question. The question is, where was humanity? Um, and it's a question that has really bothered me a lot because that's the, that is the question I have, actually, about Gosnell's Clinic. The question of uh, where, where, was, where was humanity in Gosnell's Clinic? Where was humanity in Harrisburg in all of those multiple bureaucratic offices with these people living beautiful lives who didn't do anything for the most vulnerable amongst us? Vulnerable babies born into this country, into the American dream for, for moments, some of them as long as 20 minutes who struggled for life and were murdered in plain sight. That we have inadequate time to go into more details. I do want to flesh this out further in future conversations with our guest, Anne McElhenney. And, Anne, again, this is important. If folks wish to contribute yes. to and please invest, do. Yes. Where, where do go they do? Go to gosnellmovie.com. Give a dollar. Give $10,000, by the way. But give a dollar. Make your voice heard. Let everyone know in Hollywood, you think this is an important film. 27,000 people so far think it's important. My goal is to make that 100,000 people. Gosnellmovie.com. Movie and by the way, that's G-O-S-N-E-L-L movie.com. Anne McElhenney, our guest. And, thank and you so Thank much. you very much. God bless you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Viewpoints on the talk station, FM 107 AM 1240.